Palettes and Fixture Control. In this video, we're going to look at how you can record palettes and how they can be used in some different ways. So first off, we're going to look at recording some of our own palettes. We've seen already that when you patch fixtures, you get auto palettes already. To make your own palettes, let's select our spots and locate them. We can go to a relevant palette window. Now, when you record a palette, it will only record by default the attribute related to that palette. So even though I've located a fixture and in the programmer, I've got dimmer, uh, position, color, beam attributes all active. In my position window, if I record a position palette, it's going to mask out everything that's not position attribute. So it's going to mask off the dimmer, color, and beam information. So if I want to make my own palette, I go to position, I'm going to grab my lights, tilt them using my encoder, fan on the pan, spread them out, toggle off fan, and now I want to store that as my own position palette. Record, click on a position tile to name the palette, hit the set button, select the palette, let's call that fan back and I've now stored my first palette so I can now click through some different palettes and recall my palette like so here. If I want to make myself a color palette let's scroll down and find an empty color tile and again color it mix using your encoder wheels or you can select another palette to start working from. So I'll make a burnt orange color palette here, record, select the color palette tile and you can see you've now recorded yourself that color palette. If it's a color palette We'll try and give you an icon that relates to the color you've just mixed there as well. You don't need the visualizer window open to do that, so you can do that on a console as well. Set, click on the palette to give it its name, and there's two palettes already recorded. Now, if you look at the top right of a palette, it says C here for color, P for position, B for beam, and you get intensity palettes as well, which you can record into your intensity window in the view palettes view if you want intensity palettes. So by default, we've masked out other attributes, even though they're in the programmer, from being in our palette. You can have a palette that has got other attributes in as well. So you could have a position palette uh, with dimmer in if you wanted. A common use might be a beam palette for Gobo, uh, where you might want to have some position in there as well, maybe. Uh, so let's go and have a look and record ourselves a beam palette now, which has position in. So we're gonna go to the beam window. We're gonna select the Gobo. And we've already got our lights in a position. So instead of just going record and selecting a palette, which would just give us a palette with just beam information in, we're going to go to shift record, which opens up our record options. And we're going to select pan, tilt, and gobo information for gobo one and two. Close the options, select the palette. And you can now see here my palette has got position and beam information in there. P, B, position and beam information. Let's clear the programmer and look at how we can use palettes in our show. So select your spots, locate them. We're going to select our fan on the back palette that we recorded. Going to go down and select the orange palette. And now I'm going to record that to a queue on playback 10. I'm also going to record it to a queue on playback 9 and 8 as well. Clear my programmer. So one use of palettes could be that you've got a palette, which maybe you've used in multiple queues. You've used that in 50 different queues or so, uh, or as many as you like in Magic Queue throughout your programming. You turn up at the venue, the lights are in a slightly different position, or the lighting director doesn't quite like the color you've used. All you need to do to update those 50 or whatever number queues you've got is you update the one palette. Once you've updated that one palette, any queues linked to it are automatically updated as well. So first off, let's just check our queue is linked to a palette. Double tap the select button, view queue, can show us here exactly what's going on inside our queue. You can see here the 10 fixtures and the attributes inside for each one of those fixtures. So for our pan and tilt attributes, you can see the information here. Well, first off, it's got a name of our palette name, which is a giveaway for that attribute is linked to a palette. But the confirmation is looking for a little white square in the bottom left corner. The white square in the bottom left corner means that attribute is linked to a palette. So I know that pan and tilt is linked to the palette called fan back and my color information here, see here, uh, cyan, magenta, yellow is linked to the orange palette. Again, it's got the name and the square in the bottom left corner. And if I click through onto playbacks 9 and 10 as well, you can see the same information, the same palette linking in those three different playbacks and queues. Now, if I want to update one of those or all of those queues using the palette, I can select my fixtures. Again, I can locate because we automatically mask out when we're using palettes. Select the fan on the back palette, and let's say I want to change that uh, now to be on the back of the stage, not the back wall. 
and I'll just re-record that palette. Record, click on the palette. Do you want to update it? Yes. I'm going to go to my color window, select the orange. Maybe let's take out more magenta so it becomes more of a yellow color. Record, click on the palette, update, yes. The information's in the programmer, so clear the programmer. And now when I run those three cues, you can see each one of them has been updated and is using that new position and color information that those palettes now hold. You can also use palettes for live playback of your show and also for quick recording. So if I select my spots again and locate them and I go to my color window, when you click on a palette, it's instantly applied to your fixtures. You can apply palettes with time and offset. You can do that by simply typing a number on your keypad, which relates to seconds. Three, click on a palette, and you can see the fixtures change to that palette color or that new palette information over that time. The same works for position. Three, fan on the back, and slowly they'll move back over three seconds to that new position. When you apply a palette with time, and you then go on and record a cue, that timing will be stored in your queue as well. But playing back palettes of time can be used for live work as well, negating the need to record so many queues. You can run things live from your programmer. To make things more interesting, you can apply palettes of time and offset as well. Again, using your keypad, I could type three for three seconds, and this time using the asterisk or a star key at the top and selecting a different palette. I'm gonna select my magenta palette, and you can see now over three seconds, that magenta palette is offset across those fixtures. I've not had to record a cue to do that, it's doing it live in the programmer. If you do go on and record a cue, that complex timing would be stored in your cue as well. So I'm gonna go record, and I'm gonna select playback number seven. And this time I'm gonna type a different number, four seconds, and I'm gonna hit the star key, and this time press the minus key. And you can find these shortcuts inside the Magic Cue manual under the palette section. So I've typed four star minus, and I'm gonna select the blue color, and you can see now it applies that palette over four seconds from the inside out over my spots. Record, select playback seven. Let's do a third cue, and this time let's say five seconds star dot, and let's say green, and that now applies the green palette randomly over my spots over that time. Record and select. And you can use combinations of time star minus or star plus star dot or star forward slash for different offsets and apply types over your fixtures and the order it plays back in or applies in is over your group selected order so if you've got a group which has stored your fixtures at 101 through 110 and you apply left to right using say three star would go in that order if your group is stored a fixture at 111 113 110 and so on in a random order it will play back in that order as well in the order that your group is recorded in. Clear the programmer and I'm going to run that playback and you can see even though it's a chase it's remembered that selection order and you've very quickly built a complex cue stack or chase by just simply applying palettes of time and offset when you go and record your cues. If I double click my select button and turn this into a cue stack you can see fade delay is already populated now because it's got the timing of those attributes in already. So as I press my play button you can see exactly that time I entered an offset being applied through when I stepped through those cues. So that's palettes. We're also going to look at fixture control. So we've recorded some cues and palettes by pressing buttons like our locate key, and locate is putting our fixtures in the program at the locate value. You can customize what happens when you press locate on your fixtures by recording yourself a locate cue. So maybe you're going to use locate during your show, you press locate, you don't want them to go open white, pointing straight down, maybe you want them to go in blue uh, into a position in the middle of your stage or something. So let's just go to position, let's tilt the lights forward, let's fan, and let's turn them inwards. So maybe when you press locate, you want your fixtures to go to that position and that color. Toggle off fan, we go to our queue store, and your queue store is a central repository of all queues recorded in your show file. So all queues used in different queue stacks will end up individually here in your queue store. So if you go and label queues within your queue stack, it's much easier to identify what's happening in this window. But I'm going to record a queue at anywhere I like to queue 100. And at the moment, that is simply just a queue of that information. But at the top of the window, you can set at the top here, set lock queue or set locate queue. And that now is a locate queue 
for my fixtures. So when I go and select my spots and locate, they now locate to that Q's value rather than the usual open white default or locate values for all of my fixtures. And the other fixtures still will locate their usual value. I haven't changed the locate value for my wash fixtures or the dimmers. I've only done it for the spots. If you wanted to set custom locates for the washes, you would include them into that queue. You can only have one locate queue on the console, so you'd make one big locate queue of all of the fixtures you want to customize inside it. If I go back to the queue window and hit the clear locate queue button there, now when I go back, grab my spots and locate, I'll go back to the usual locate value for those fixtures. This is different to defaults on a fixture, and you'll notice that in Magic Queue, in normal live mode, when you clear the programmer, so if I said spots in green in the up position, clear the programmer, the fixtures will stay in their current position. They'll hold the current position, color, and beam values. So if I go and grab the spots and I just set that full, they'll hold in that green color and in that position because nothing is telling them to do anything different. Nothing's telling them to go back to a different color or position. This is useful for live show work, but you can change that. If you go to the setup window, view settings, prog, there's the option here for unused channels return to default. And if you change that to yes, when a fixture or attribute is no longer used, so a queue isn't using it, or the programmer isn't using that attribute, it will go back to its default value, which usually is the same as the locate value apart from for dimmer. We locate dimmer on, but we default it off, but usually other attributes are the same. So now, if I grab my spots and I set them in red, let's turn them on at full, and I set position, I clear my programmer, select the spots and type at full, you can see because nothing was using them any longer, they've gone back to their default value. If I go to the setup window, change that option again on the prog, unused channels return to defaults, change it back to the default, which is heads about intensity only, clear the programmer, now select my spots, stay red, let's turn them on so we can see them, in a position, clear the programmer, because I've changed that mode now, type at full, I've now gone back to that mode where they stay doing what they're doing until something tells them to do something different. So that's palettes and fixture control. In our next video, we're going to have a look at effects.